Special thanks to Patreon supporter Archduke Engel for making this tutorial possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, scared to before here bringing you another Minecraft Cold War Path to Build tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the HNLMS De Zaven Provencian C802. The De Zaven Provencian was a De Zaven Provencian class cruiser of the Royal Netherlands Navy. Laid down in 1939, construction was interrupted by World War II and the ship was only commissioned in 1953 with the identification number C802. She served until 1976 when she was purchased by Peru and renamed the Aragai. Aragru? Something of that sort. With the Peruvian Navy, she uh, served until 1999 and was scrapped in 2000. The Dezaven Provencian was armed with 852mm or 6 inch guns and double turrets, 857mm um, and 840mm machine guns. The rear turrets were replaced in 1962 with the RIM-2 Terrier SAM system. She was 185.7 meters long and had a beam of 17.25 meters and a draft of 6.85 meters. She, dis dis uh, she displaced 12,250 tons and could achieve a speed of 32.2 uh, knots. Um, she had a crew of 957. During her service with the Peruvian Navy, she was converted to a helicopter cruiser. To do this, the remaining turrets at the back of the ship were removed to make space for a hangar and a flight deck uh, big enough to support four helicopters. So, yeah, it's a really cool ship. I think this is actually the first uh, Netherlands ship to actually um, incorporate uh, surface to air, just surface to surface uh, missiles on it. Basically, the first ship really to have missiles for it in the Netherlands Navy. Um, it's a really cool looking ship and um, just is uh, pretty cool. The new ships that they are coming out with are actually, I believe, going by the name the Dezaven Provencian class, which we did do a tutorial on a little while ago. So, we do have the brand new frigates um, that are being fielded by the Netherlands, are going to be entering production. Uh, but this right here is basically that kind of precursor to it. It definitely has that World War II look to it, but again, I really am starting to grow fond of these kind of early, mid-Cold War type ships because they all had that kind of, they're a really good crossover, I should say, between World War II and modern ships. They have that World War II feel to them, but they still have that Cold War aspect of these, um, you know, missile systems and uh, trying to incorporate all this new technology while still keeping that doctrine of having a lot of actual projectile main gun batteries um so really cool ship and i'm really happy with the way that this overall came out with and should be a fun addition to our netherlands modern um slash cold war navy um and also if you're looking for a um peruvian uh ship this is probably one that would also suit you obviously with a few modifications this is done up in its 1962 configuration uh with the uh Terrier mess SAM system on the back of the ship, so that is incorporated on the back there, and the turrets are removed um, as it used to originally stand. So, um, overall, pretty fun ship, and should be a fun tutorial for you guys to all build. Before we go and take a look at it, though, I want to give a special thanks to Patreon supporter uh, Archduke Engel for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description where you can go and pledge a small amount to the channel every month and doing so whatever your core request you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel and is really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link will always be in my video descriptions. Without further ado though, let's go and move in here to take a look at the HNLMS De Zaven Provencian. So, going ahead and start off with, we have the main guns up in the front here. These are the, um, 152 uh, millimeter guns, if I remember correctly, or um, yeah, 152 millimeter guns um, out to the front here, and then we obviously have some of the Bofor guns or some of the smaller um, caliber guns and stuff like that. Obviously, this is a little bit more of the modernized version, so this does have a little bit of less um, actual guns compared to that of when it was first launched. Um, so all the front detail here, we have the superstructure here with all the um, you know, mass for radar and, um, you know, targeting systems, all that kind of stuff. And as we progress further, we have the mid deck here with, uh, all the lifeboats, all that stuff. Again, some more guns here, uh, and guns located right here as well on the back. And continuing back further, uh, we have the rear mast, uh, some of the targeting systems, I believe most likely for the missile system on the back here. 
Uh, on the back, we do have a uh, little crane that would be right here, which I think actually got cut off, so I'll have to fix that. Uh, but there will be a little crane right there, and um, then you have uh, the back of the ship here. Uh, the missile system also on the back here. So overall, pretty cool ship. Should make an awesome addition if you're looking for kind of a cool Cold War Netherlands-type ship. And without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our first layer of our ship, we're going to be going in and start with layer 1. A few things I would like to mention real quick before we go ahead and jump into this layer is that first, um, if you are basically building this, uh, obviously, tutorial in the water, uh, most likely, this being a ship, you'll want it in the water, you do want to make sure that you position this correctly in the water. Our first layer, layer 1, is going to sit a block underneath the surface of the water. You can see here this blue row of concrete representing the water level, and you can see that we have layer 1 here basically right below that. Uh, very important to make sure that is correct because obviously you don't want your ship sitting super weird in the water. Um, but yeah, with that out of the way, that's it for that. And also, in addition, if you're completely new to my BAFTA build tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials is for about the first three layers for this ship. We're going to do half on camera, half off. What this means is I'm going to be building the entire center line, and then the right side of the ship, and it'll be up to you guys to take the right side, copy it over to the left side. Since this uh, whole section is completely symmetrical and there's not a whole lot going on, that's the way we're going to structure it. Once we get into the superstructure and some of the more difficult uh, parts of the build, we will be going ahead and covering those a little bit more in detail. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial. So to get started with here, we're going to place down our row of brick top slabs. On this row of brick top slabs is going to be our starting line of the ship, and this is going to be a total of 29 brick top slabs in length. We're going to go ahead and place down two acacia wood trap doors here on the back. Then going back up to the front here, we're going to go ahead and count back one, two, three, four. Our fifth and sixth brick top slabs here are going to have acacia wood trap doors coming off the side of them, as well as a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty brick top slabs back, and then one and two acacia wood trap doors directly after that. And once you have that done, you're going to take that same row we just did, flip it over to the other side, and you'll have everything you need for layer number one complete. Here's what it should look like for the top-down view, and with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number two. Moving into our next layer, we have layer two. For layer two, to start off with, we're going to place down a red concrete block on top of this brick top slab, and going back from this red concrete block, we're going to place down a long row of red concrete. That's going to go back a total of 32 back from that first block. So, in total, we should have 33 red concrete blocks down our center line here for the ship. And it should stick to blocks past these acacia wood trap doors on the bottom here. After that, we're going to then place down a brick top slab. Then two brick walls after that top slab. After that, going back up to the front, we're going to start working our way out to the sides. We're going to place down a red stained glass pane coming off the third and fourth red concrete block. And then two brick walls after that. We're going to go and then switch back to red concrete. Place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23 red concrete blocks back, followed by two brick stairs, an acacia wood uh, fence gate, and then two end rods back, and then a uh, birch wood slab like that on the very end there. After that, we want to go and then go back up to the front. We're going to go to our fourth red concrete block on the side here back. We're going to place down a red stained glass pane, followed by a second. Then we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen red stained glass panes along the side there in total. Looking at it from above here, this is what it should look like for the top down view. And once you have that all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have there for layer number two of the ship. With that, let's move on to layer number three. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a stone block on top of this red concrete block here. Then a red stained glass pane coming off, or sorry, a light gray stained glass pane coming off that toward the front. We're going to go ahead and place down two more stone blocks back from this one, so you have a total of three here. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of four of gray wool. After that row of four gray wool, we're going to place down a long row of stone going back. That's going to be a total of 22. And then after that row of 22, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, and six gray concrete, or sorry, gray wool blocks. And then a stone block here on the very end. After that's all done, we're going to then go back up the front and work our way out to the side. We're going to go and grab ourselves an item frame. And then after that item frame, we're going to go ahead and also grab ourselves a uh, crossbow. We're going to go and place down an item frame here on the side of this stone block, and then a crossbow in the item frame rotated the face downwards like so. We then want to place down two light gray stained glass panes back, two andesite walls, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, and twenty six stone blocks back, then one, two, three, and four andesite walls, and then one light gray stained glass pane here. 
We also want to go ahead and grab iron bars. We're going to place down two iron bars, coming off these last two stone blocks, or sorry, stone walls, like that. And then going back up to the front here, we're going to go ahead and count one, two, and our third stone block back. We're going to place down a light gray stained glass pane to the side of it, followed by a second one back, then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one. Uh, like race stainless paints back. You can double check our count here and it should be 21 in total. After we have that all done, same thing on the inner side like we've been doing and that right there will basically conclude what we have there for layer number three. With that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number four. All right guys, so moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. At this point in the tutorial, the rest of the layers will be done all together, both sides, um, as we start to get into kind of the detailing. Some of the detailing can be a little intricate, so I feel it's best just to go over this all together, make it a little bit easier for y'all. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. First thing we want to do is we're going to place down a andesite, or sorry, a birchwood fence gate on top of this wall, or on top of this glass pane, and then open this toward the front like so. We're going to go ahead and take birchwood signs, and we'll just wrap around the fence gate like so. After that, we can also go ahead and take the time to place down an end rod on top of it, just like that to go ahead and complete the front little mass there. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone slab back, followed by two daylight detectors, which will turn to the night mode like so, and then a light gray or a skeleton skull on top of these light gray stained glass panes at a slight angle like this to the sides there. After that, we want to go and then place down a stone brick stair, which will be on top of this uh, block right here, and then we're going to place down a stone brick upside down stair directly behind it. Coming off that stair toward the front, we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate, and we're going to open it up toward that stair like so. Um, after we have that done, we're going to go then take our light gray carp or dark gray carpets, or just normal gray, I guess, and place down two of these carpets on top of these two stone blocks like that to both sides. If you're on Java, we can also take the time to place down an item frame on both sides of that stone brick up sound stair. And in those item frames, we're going to place down a gray bed, which will be rotated with the back facing backwards, and that is going to be a light gray bed. Once we have that done, we want to go and then place down a andesite wall here, directly behind that, fall by a stone full block, and then to the sides of that stone full block, we are going to place down a light gray stainless pane to both sides. We then want to place down a row of three of stone, followed by a second row of three of stone, a third row, and a fourth row like that across. These last three rows here are going to have end rods that are going to be on top of these glass panes to these sides, and those are going to be the last four rows. We then want to go ahead and continue on by placing down another set of of uh, two rows of three of stone going across. We're going to go and then place down a quartz stair, like so, and then a quartz slab behind that. And same thing will be done over here, quartz stair and quartz slab. We'll go ahead and grab ourselves some birchwood signs again and place them down the sides of the stair and the slab, like that for our first lifeboat there. We're going to go and then place down another set of uh, two rows of three of stone blocks like that across, this time followed by a white bed on both sides like that. At this point, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to place down two stone blocks down the center, two inside walls to both sides there, and then a white bed on top of these glass panes like that to both sides. Once we have that done, we want to go and then place down a row of three of stone blocks across, then a stone brick ups down stair to both sides, and we want to place down a narrow stone block there in the center, inside wall to both sides, and this time a skeleton skull on the side of that stone brick stair. Continuing on, we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 stone blocks down the center. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 inside walls. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We're going to go ahead and then place down a iron trap door. Come off this one right here to both sides. We're going to go ahead and then place down a birchwood fence gate on top of this glass pane, which will be opened up toward the outside like so. And we want to go ahead and then place down two more iron trap doors going back along the sides there. After we get to this point, we're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks, we're going to place down a row of three, followed by a second row of three, and then a third row like that across. We can go ahead and then take our polished black stone buttons, and to make some portholes here along the side here, we're going to place down three polished black stone buttons along those rows there. On the back here, we're going to place down a stone block here, and a side wall to both sides of it. We then want to place down a birchwood fence gate here, which will be opened up toward the rear of the ship, like so. Then a daylight detector, which will be turned to night mode, make sure you open that fence gate or adjust that fence gate if it does change on you. We then want to place down a stone stair here, and then behind that stone stair we're going to place down an anvil. Now coming off the sides of the anvil, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate to both sides, and we then want to go ahead and place down an end rod coming off those birchwood fence gates like so. After that, we want to then place down a redstone uh, repeater in the center there, like so, and we're going to then place down our birchwood fence gate on this stone block here, open toward the rear, and then on top of that, we're just going to go in very simply, place down a end rod like we did for the front there. 
Um, after we have that all done there, we're also going to go ahead and take some gray carpet and we're just going to place down two gray carpets on top of these two stone blocks there. And that right there will basically complete everything we have there for layer number four of the build. Taking a look at it from above, this is what it should look like from the top down view. As you can see, we're starting to get some of the superstructure, starting to get a little bit of that shaping going on. But that right there will conclude layer four. And with that, let's move on to layer number five. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five to be in, we're going to go and take a redstone repeater and we're going to place it down on top of this stone brick up downstairs. We're going to separate the notches like so. We then want to place down a stone brick stair, which will be on top of this stone block here, and then a stone brick up downstairs directly behind that. To so the sides of this, we're going to go ahead and place down a gray carpet to both sides, and we can go ahead and then place down an item frame on the sides here of this stair again if you're on Java, and we'll place down a light gray bed in it and rotate on its side, so just like we did um, down there for that turret. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a andesite wall right here, and then we're going to place down a light gray stingless pane to both sides of that wall, like so. We then want to place down one, two, three, four, five and six stone blocks down the center here. We're gonna go ahead and go to the sides and place down two inside walls here on both sides. And then we wanna go ahead and switch to like gray stingless paints. We're gonna place down a row of three to both sides and then we're gonna place down an anvil like so to both ends like that. We're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves some item frames again. And we're also gonna need some white beds. We're gonna place down item frames on the sides here of these glass panes and we're gonna place down white beds rotated on their sides like so in those glass panes and same thing will be done over here on this side as well. So just like that. In addition we're going to go ahead and take some gray carpet and on top of these end rods we're just going to go ahead and place down some gray carpet like so. Go ahead and continuing on back here to this section we're going to, go ahead and place down a white bed on top of these two walls like so then a redstone repeater in the space in between them and then we're going to go ahead and take a gray carpet and we're going to place it down here in the center. We then want to go ahead and grab a piston. We're going to place down a piston like this to both sides. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a dark open fence gate coming off the pistons here to, to the sides like so. Now at this point, if you're on Java, we're going to go ahead and grab or do a command slash give space at p space minecraft colon debug underscore stick. And this right here is going to be a command. Press enter and it should give you this glowing stick. By going up to the pistons and right clicking them, it will get rid of that top portion of them. And that right there will basically make those turrets there on the side. Make sure to hold on to this debug stick as we'll be using it a little bit later. We want to go and then place down a andesite wall on top of this block here. And then we're going to then place down a stone block behind that wall. To both sides of this stone block, we're going to place down a stone brick wall. And then a gray carpet, which will go out to these iron trap doors. We're going to go and then place down an air stone block here in the center. This time followed by a light gray stained glass pane to both sides. And at this point, we're going to go and then grab ourselves a grindstone, and we're going to place it down like this to both sides over the uh, fence gate there. And we want to go and then place down an end rod coming off that um, grindstone. And then also a gray carpet on top of this last iron trap door there. Uh, continuing down the middle here, we're going to place down a stone block here, followed by a second stone block. And then we want to go and place down an inside wall on the sides there of that first block, and then a light gray stain was painted on both sides of the next one. This section here, we're going to place down an air stone block, and we're going to do the same thing with our grindstone here. So just like that on its side, and then end rods come off those grindstones like that going back. We then want to place down a narrow stone block here in the center, and then one more back. We're going to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater with the notches spread apart on both sides like so. And then we want to place down a andesite wall directly in the center here with a gray carpet to both sides. We're going to go ahead and place down a shulker box, a light gray shulker box, and on top of that stone block, and we're going to go ahead and then place down a lever that will be coming off both sides of that shulker box, like so. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a end rod on top of this fence gate here. Then after that, we want to go ahead and grab an iron trap door, place an iron trap door coming off the end rod, and then a skeleton skull, like so. We're going to go ahead and then place down a daylight detector on top of this anvil, turn it to night mode, and we're going to go and then place down a skeleton skull on top of these two birchwood fence gates like so with the face facing toward the inside there. And once we have that all done right there, that is going to conclude what we have there for layer number five for the build. And with that, let's go ahead and move on to our next layer, layer number six. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number six. For layer six to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a piston, which will go on top of this wall right here. And we're going to then place down a dark oak fence gate coming off that piston like so. Also, from the previous layer, there should be a fence gate coming off this stair as well, so just make sure that gets added on there uh, for that forward turret. 
Once we have that done, uh, after the piston, we're going to then place down a inside wall, like so. And we want to go then place down a light gray, stain west paint to both sides there. We're going to go then place down one, two, three, four, and five stone blocks down the center here. And then go into the sides, we're going to place down one, two, three, and four light gray stain west paints, and one, two, three, and four light gray stain west paints. We then want to go ahead and grab a uh, item frame and a white bed. We're going to place down an item frame here and then a white bed in the item frame, rotate outside. And same thing will be done over here as well. We're going to go ahead and place down a cobweb to both sides like so, followed by a wither skeleton skull coming off those cobwebs, and then a inside wall coming off that stone block like so. Also for the previous layer, I forgot to include a light gray stainless pane underneath that wall, so just go ahead and throw that in there uh, right now while you're at it. So with that done, we're going to then go back here to this wall. We're going to place down a uh, gray stainless pane on top of that, followed by a inside wall back. We're going to go then place down a redstone repeater with the notches spread apart, and then a skeleton skull on top of these two um, inside walls. We're going to go then place down a birchwood fence gate uh, in the space back like so, and then we're going to go ahead and open this toward the front, and then we're going to go then place down a stone brick stair right here. And then taking birchwood signs, we're going to place down birchwood signs on the side of the stone brick stair and the side of the birchwood fence gate. So just like that. And then back from the stair, we're going to place down another stone brick slab. We're going to go then place down a light gray shulker box on top of this stone block here. Then we're going to place down an anvil uh, on top of these those two shulker boxes. And we'll then just place down our iron bars, which will be two iron bars going up from those levers. Like so, on both sides like this. And then after that, we're just going to place down a skeleton skull on top of this end rod, like that, to go in wrap up our back there. Anyways, though, with that all out of the way, that is going to do it for layer number six. Also, up here in the front, uh, for Java players, we can place, we can go ahead and adjust that piston like so. And we can also adjust the facing here of this wall so that it does not connect uh, to our um, basically our uh, piston. So that's just going to be going ahead and finding the direction the wall faces and connects up to the piston and just going ahead and setting that in the down position. And that's really all you need to do for it. And you'll get something that looks just like that. So it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Anyways, though, that right there is going to conclude what we have there for layer 6. And with that, let's go ahead and move on to layer number 7. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number 7. For layer 7, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a stone block on top of this block here. Then we're going to go 1, 2, 3, and 4 more blocks back from that. We're going to go and then place down a skeleton skull on both sides of this stone block here. And then we're going to place down a stone brick wall here on the front. If you're on Java, we're going to go ahead and then place down a stone block out to the side here, leaving a space of 1 between this wall and that block. We're going to place down a tripwire hook on the side of those uh, blocks, and then we're going to go ahead and then left click this uh, tripwire hook until we get selected facing, and we're going to go ahead and basically right click until we get this to rotate and connect to the sides there of the wall. After that's done, we'll go ahead and then left click the wall, and we'll go ahead and extend the sides of the wall out to the sides to go ahead and meet our tripwire hooks. So it should look like that there for the front. Again, that's going to be a Java only feature. And um, if you're on a different version, you'll have to find some kind of alternative for that. Um, anyways, though, once that's done, we're going to go and then place down three inside walls along the sides here. And then after that, we're going to go and then place down a stone brick upside down stair. Two both sides on top of that cobweb. Coming off the side there of the stair, or I should say the face of the stair, we're going to place down a dark oak wood sign like so. Then on the back here, a polished black stone stair, and then an end rod on top of these two with their um, skeleton skulls. Continuing on to the back, we're going to place down a uh, stair, polished black stone stair on top of that um, and inside wall there. We then want to wrap dark oak wood signs around it, like so. And then behind that stair, we're going to place down a stone upside down stair. Going ahead and continuing our way back, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate on top of this fence gate here and on top of this um, stone brick stair here. We're going to open the both fence gates away from each other. So you should get something that looks just like that there for the back. And that right there will finish off what we have there for layer 7 and with that we're probably just going to move into our final layers of our build and just basically add everything that we have left to do. So with that let's go ahead and move into our final layers. Alright guys, so moving into our final layers, we have layers 8 through 13. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to begin with by placing down a skeleton skull on top of this stone block here. Directly behind that we're going to place down two end rods that go up like so. And we then want to go ahead and grab iron bars and on top of these two skeleton skulls to the sides here, we're going to place down two iron bars going up like that for our antennas. After that we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick slab here, then a um, end rod 
to both sides of that stone brick slab and again a iron bar that goes up from that like so. We're going to go then place down a stone brick stair like so. A skeleton skull on top of that stone brick stair and then a end rod to both sides of it like so. Continuing on to the back here, we're going to place down a stone block here and then we're going to place down a row of three of iron bars going across the top there. And we also want to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater on top of these stone brick stairs like so. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down a dark oak fence gate coming off this stone block here. To the sides of that, we're going to go ahead and place down a wither skeleton skull like that. And then a dark oak sign coming off that fence gate. We're going to go ahead and place down a narrow dark oak fence gate going up. Again, opened up toward the front there. And on the top here, we're going to place down a polished black stone upside down stair, which will be facing that direction like so. On the side of the stair, we're going to place down an end rod. And on the face of the stair here, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull. On the back, we're also going to go ahead and grab a lever, and we're going to place down a lever here on the back of that stair. Going up from the lever, we're going to place down two uh, end rods, and then on the very top here, we're going to place down a iron bar. We then want to place down a cobweb on top of the stair here, and we're going to then place down a wither skeleton skull on top of the cobweb to go ahead and finish off that forward mass. For this section here, uh, we're going to go ahead and go on top of this uh, stair here. We're going to place down another brick fence post. To the sides of that, we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate, like so, and we're going to open these fence gates toward the back. We're going to go then place down a dark oak wood sign on the side of the fence gates, and then an end rod coming off that narrow brick fence post there in the center. Continuing our way back, we're going to go then place down two dark oak wood fence gates on top of these two um, birch wood fence gates. We're going to open these fence gates toward each other, then another set of fence gates facing each other like that going up. We're going to go then place down a fence gate right here, open it toward the back, and then we're going to go and then grab a polished black stone stair and place it upside down coming off that fence gate. Coming off the front of the stair also, we're going to place down a fence gate and open it toward it like so. On the top here of this fence gate, we're going to go ahead and place down two end rods up, followed by a iron bar on the very top there. We're going to go and then place down a row of three of iron bars on top of this polished black stone stair. And then lastly, uh, for the main structure, we're going to place down a gray carpet on top of this fence gate like that for the back there. And once you have that done, you pretty much have your mask complete for the ship. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and now move into our rigging um, for the ship to go ahead and add that on here. So, for our rigging on the ship, we're going to go ahead and start off with our back section. We're going to place down a barrier block here. We're going to go ahead and then go up two. So, we're going to go up and forward two, like so. We want to go ahead and then go up one and forward one. And then we're going to go ahead and go up. We're going to go ahead and do two. Up again, two, and then one. Just like that. And after we have that done, we're going to go and then place down a stone button here. Then we're going to place down a stone button on the side, on the top there, on the side, on the bottom, side, bottom, side, and bottom. Like that. And once we take our barrier block away out of our hand and those barrier blocks disappear, we should get something that looks like that there for our cabling that will go up and connect up to that dark oak grid fence game. So that right there is going to be that cabling for the back there. For the uh, midsection, we're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and going off this fence gate. We're going to place down one, two, and three barrier blocks. And then we want to go ahead and then go two off of this end rod. We're going to place down a button on the side here of this uh, barrier block here. Then two on top. And then two on the side here like that for those last two up on top there. So something like this. And then once those disappear, you'll have your uh, row that looks like that. Then for our forward ones, uh, we're going to we're going to start off with by going to the end rod or the iron bar on top here. We're going to place down two barrier blocks. We're going to drop down two, then two again, then a, another set of two, two, then two, and then two, two, and then one, and it should connect up to that end rod like so. Then taking our stone buttons, we're going to place down a button on the side here of this uh, this top one. So, be a button on the side here, then a button on bottom, side, 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 bottom, and side like that. And once you have that all done right there, that will basically do our rigging for the ship and with that, that will complete what we have there for uh, layers 7, or sorry, layers 8 through 13, and that will complete my tutorial here for the HNLMS Dezaven Provincian 
C802 cruiser. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do want to be using this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This being anything from a solid build, link to my channel or this video if this does appear on any social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, your free user for a project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. With that, though, again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Archduke Angle for making this tutorial tutorial possible and as always feel free to check out my patreon page link is always in my video descriptions with that though thank you guys again so much for watching as always don't forget to like comment and subscribe this is gary 204 and i'll see you guys next time